Okay, I'm going to dive into the last section of uh, this uh, content specs for the limited scope. This is um, from page 8, section 2D, quality control of imaging access equipment and accessories, and we'll try to go through this relatively quickly. I, quality control is the maintenance and the documentation of the equipment that we use. Uh, this is a part of the larger quality uh, management system and there are quite a number of processes that go on in the successful operation of a radiology department. The one that we will be interested in here is quality control, that aspect of maintaining and uh, keeping our equipment operating within the manufacturer's recommendations. One of those things is the light field to the radiation field alignment and the central ray alignment. Light field to radiation field um, refers to the collimator light and how closely registered that is to the actual central ray. And so we have a way that we can determine whether or not the collimator light is in fact close to uh, the central ray placement. And we use a collimator test tool, which is actually a series of paper clips that are bent into 90 degree angles, uh, a, a straight edge, uh, making an L. And what we'll do is we'll take those paper clips and we'll turn on our collimator light centered on an image receptor at exactly 40 inches and we will put those paper clips exactly over the corners of the collimator light. And then we'll make an exposure of that and uh, we'll see just how closely the collimator light registers onto the actual central ray. Uh, additionally, we'll take another mark and we'll put that right in the very center of the uh, central ray and uh, you can see that these uh, tolerances, 2% uh, source to image receptor error is allowed between the primary beam image and the light field size. And this is a United States federal standard. The centering mark should be within 1% of the light field central ray. And so based on that, these are quality control tests that we can do to be sure that uh, when we're aiming the central ray at our patient, um, we are capturing the anatomy that we want to see as opposed to being several inches off. Another one of these uh, tests is the positive beam limitation mechanism. As you recall, pos positive beam limitation is that mechanism where you put an image receptor into the Bucky. It recognizes the size and the orientation of that image receptor and it opens the columnator exactly to that size automatically for you. And the intent here is that the primary beam is no larger than the image receptor unless we, um, unless we activate the override lock, which is the exception and not the rule. All right, let's see if I can make this work. <clears throat> Semi-annual quality control tests, uh, and a complete list of this is in Carlton and Adler on pages 424 through 428. And if you're not familiar with these, you might want to take a look and uh, just read through those uh, couple of pages again. Uh, Semi-annual tests will include the focal spot size estimation. Uh, we typically have in uh, clinical use two focal spots both a small and a large focal spot. Um, focal spot size estimation is not something that technologists typically do. This is more for the quality control technologist or for the physicists on a semi-annual basis. The half value layer, I think that we did that experiment in lab and the half value layer uh, is determining how much aluminum filtration is required to cut the intensity of the beam in half. And that gives us uh, some sense for uh, the output of our tube. Uh, it also is valuable. Uh, the half value layer helps us to make some um, choices regarding um, patient dose.
the collimator and the central ray, the bucky tray, all of that needs to be lined up. Uh, the collimator of the central ray and the bucky tray, um, because it's not always about uh, making an exposure right onto the image plate. It's also making an exposure through the table, through the grid, to the image plate in the bucky. The distance and the centering indicators. Get out the tape measure and see if 40 inches really is 40 inches. See if 72 really is 72. We also want to check the angulator or the protractor accuracy to be sure that if we're registering at 15 degrees, that is in fact 15 degrees. KV accuracy and timer accuracy. Uh, those are now done with electronic meters where we can take a meter and put it in the central ray, and that central ray will demonstrate um, exactly what our KV was based on how it, in, it inter, <clears throat> interacts with the meter. Same thing with the timer. So if we're selecting uh, 50 KV at uh, 10 milliseconds, for instance, then we have proof positive based on these meters that that is in fact what uh, we selected and that is in fact uh, what the output was. MR and MAS uh, milliamperage linearity. Remember linearity is similar to reciprocity. Remember that uh, one, um, one second at 10 MA would be a 10 MAS exposure but half a second at 20 MA would be also a 10 um, MAS exposure. And so we want to be sure that our milliamperage stations are set up and that there is no um, discrepancy between them, that they're accurate and predictable. Additionally, exposure reproducibility uh, having to do with uh, taking perhaps three exposures at the same setting and being sure that we get relatively the same exposure uh, each time as opposed to one of them being uh, wildly different from the others. If your x-ray image comes up and looks like this, well, you might expect that we have a problem somewhere. And this is not something that we as technologists can fix. This is uh, a malfunction somewhere in the processing chain. I think that we got an exposure. I think that in some cases that exposure is okay. I'm seeing the bony architecture of the shoulders. I'm seeing my marker clearly, but I'm not seeing the lung fields and I'm seeing a very strange artifact going through it. So this is something that we would need to communicate immediately to the uh, clinical engineer and he or she could come and uh, take a look uh, to determine what the problem is and reset it uh, or repair it. Weekly technologist responsibilities include cleaning and inspecting the image receptors. This is especially true with the CR um, receptors. The DR receptors, we don't open them, but in fact, we would maybe want to clean them. They do get bodily fluids and especially blood on them, and we would want to uh, clean that off carefully, always using solutions that are rated for this application. We want to clean cassettes as needed and expect the image receptors for dirt or damage, and this is not necessarily true just on the outside, but on the CR images, we may periodically take the photostimulable phosphor plates out of the cassette and we might want to clean them. We're going to inspect the entire length of the DR cable, uh, looking for splits or exposure of wires because we don't want to um, have any electrical shorts. Additionally, that will uh, contribute to that electronic noise uh, that we're trying very carefully to eliminate from our image. If there's breaks in the wire, have caused wire exposure, well, let's inform the service personnel immediately because we don't want electrical shorts, especially um, when we have patients involved. Weekly equipment manufacturers should provide lists of appropriate system tests and 
in the past, this was done by the designated quality control technologist. We don't have many of those quality control technologists around anymore. Uh, and so this falls to the technologists uh, to accomplish these tasks. Although there are still some um, facilities where there is a lead technologist or quality control technologist that handles this. Um, what are the things that we might do? Image acquisition testing with phantoms, taking x-ray images with phantoms to determine uh, the cassette uh, integrity. We also want to take a look and see what kind of exposure factors uh, we're getting in automatic exposure control and whether that is um, uh, what we might expect our readout to be or whether that's wildly different from that. And again, all problems must be reported and recorded and reported immediately. Artifacts. I talked about artifacts a little earlier. Remember the uh, wet diapers? In addition to that, we have debris on imaging plates, cassettes, laser lenses, and, my, and reader mirrors. Uh, and all of that stuff is in the CR reader. And uh, we want to be aware of that. Major artifacts should be noted at the time of processing and reported like that chest x-ray I showed you. Smaller, less intrusive artifacts can be missed and ignored, resulting in long-term problems. So it's important that if it looks a little strange, if it looks different, uh, let's jot it down somewhere as a part of the log. Uh, proper problem reporting procedures provide a mechanism through which recurring quality trends can emerge. If, for instance, we have several reports from room four that uh, the images are excessively noisy or too light, and that room may need to be inspected for system interference or automatic exposure control recalibration. Doesn't happen often, but it does happen. Reporting also helps service personnel to determine what issues exist based on location and based on frequency. Uh, incidentally, in this slide, I maybe alluded to the fact that uh, diapers, uh, wet diapers, are an artifact. And yes, they are an artifact, but they are not an equipment artifact. This is something that we want to uh, try and eliminate before we make the exposure. <clears throat> Physicist responsibility, their schedules may vary depending on their availability, but typically their responsibilities include a semi-annual or annual review of department images to do the following, to reestablish baseline images and also to some extent the exposure index levels, the check exposure indicator accuracy with calibrated ion chamber, to determine exposure trends, looking at, um, for instance, chest x-rays and whether or not um, we seem to be making um, a larger uh, exposure for that than we uh, had initially when we accepted the equipment. Okay, what else do we have? Uh, analyze repeat rates. Repeat rates are important from the perspective that they indicate a technologist who may be having trouble uh, positioning a certain uh, projection. And so they would help to identify that that technologist maybe needs a little remediation in how to do a open mouth projection of the uh, dontoid, for instance, or hips, for instance. And so repeat rates uh, are also uh, revealing to the management of the department. To review the quality control records and to determine whether or not our uh, equipment is getting old or whether or not uh, it's still operating within the manufacturer's recommendation and also to analyze the service history that we have. I mentioned that there was a difference uh, between quality management, quality assurance, and quality control. And the differences are that uh, quality management is a coherent system designed to monitor equipment performance through QA and QC standards. Quality assurance are activities that provide adequate confidence that a radiology service will render consistently high quality images and services. 
quality control, that's the aspect that monitors the technical equipment to maintain certain technical standards. It's the quality control that we are pr uh, primarily concerned with. So quality control is intended to ensure equipment performs consistent with the industry benchmarks and with the manufacturer's benchmarks. Quality control procedures and guidelines are focused on the equipment, and that's an important aspect of it. Quality assurance, QA, is uh, focused on the processes that we use uh, in for department operations. Like, for instance, the survey you get after your appointment, were you uh, able to make an appointment within a reasonable time frame? When you arrived at the hospital, were you greeted uh, promptly and courteously? Uh, things of that nature. Uh, we as technologists are more involved in the quality control aspect, whether or not the equipment is operating at its, uh, at its recommended efficiency. And this is an ongoing process as the equipment becomes older and does not perform as well as when it was new. And so quality control ha helps us to uh, track that trend and so that we recognize if our equipment is perhaps coming to the end of its useful life expectancy. Uh, quality control has to do with uh, computed radiography, direct digital radiography, as well as our PAC system, our radiology information system, contrast injectors, and so forth. All of the equipment falls under quality control. All right, DR system maintenance, our, our central computed radiography, photostimulable phosphor plates require regular erasure of the plates, as well as periodic inspection for cracks and for surface markings. And I mentioned that we want to take them periodically out of the cassette and give them a, a good going over. We're going to visually inspect for cracks. The surface marking should be performed semi-annually, and that being every six months or so. Any plates creating artifacts should be removed immediately, and a semi-annual performance of exposure test is also recommended. And this is something uh, that's typically done by the quality control technologist or the technologist who has that kind of training. DR systems display monitor. Remember that our radiographic images show up uh, on soft copy monitors. And so the display monitors require regular quality assurance to ascertain image quality and monitor phosphor decay. Just like our x-ray room, the monitors do not last forever. Spatial resolution is evaluated through the display of the standardized grayscale tool. Point spread function, line spread function, and modulation transfer function can also be evaluated through these tools. Uh, let's see, we have the brightness of the image is evaluated through measurements of dynamic range with a luminance meter, and that luminance meter is uh, taking a reading right off of the monitor and the unit of measure for the luminance off of the monitor, that unit of measure is called the candela. I don't know if that's important for you guys or not, but you might want to recognize that term. The line dynamic range is measured by setting the greatest visible black and white level by using the monitor contrast and the brightness controls, and then readings from both of these levels are obtained with that luminance uh, level. So here's a couple of test patterns that we would demonstrate that we would bring up on our monitor. Uh, this first, you can see that they're different test patterns, and um, this first one is produced by the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers. Uh, the other one is uh, one of the test patterns from the American Association of Physicists in Medicine. And these are both standard test patterns that are used for this kind of thing. What you can see on here, uh, looking at the SMPTE uh, pattern, is you can see line pairs, you can see different grayscales, you can see patterns uh, among 
you know, different uh, <clears throat> different squares have uh, different levels of gray and black in them. And the same thing is true with the AAPM. Uh, it's laid out a little bit differently, but uh, you can essentially achieve the same kinds of readings from it. And what you'll do is you'll turn on the monitor and allow it to warm up. You'll be sure that the monitor is dust free on the viewing surface and near the airflow areas. You will bring up one of these test patterns and you'll check for geometric distortions. You know, the straight lines should appear as straight lines and should not be curved. You'll look for reflection. You'll look for luminance response. You'll look for luminance dependencies. And I'm sorry, I'm not real clear what those are. And you will look for the resolution of the monitor. Because remember, the monitor is how we see our x-ray images. Now, typically we do this um, monitor quality control on doctor's reading area. Uh, those are the monitors that are used to interpret the image. Uh, and so that is more important than the monitors that we have in our technologist area where we're looking at our initial image to be sure that we've included all of the anatomy that we need to see. Uh, going forward here, we also have shielding accessories, lead apron and glove testing. That's done on a yearly basis, and typically that can be done fluoroscopically as opposed to taking x-ray images of it. Uh, and we keep a log of our shielding uh, accessories and whether or not they uh, have any cracks uh, or splits in them. Uh, any of them that are identified as having cracks or tears should be repaired or would take that apron out of service. Okay, and um, if indeed we do take it out of service, remember they have lead in them so they need to be disposed of as hazardous waste. And so this brings me to the conclusion of the section that uh, Ms. Seeley asked me to review for you. Uh, this is the content specs for uh, the for the um, equipment operation and quality assurance sections one and two, uh, and section one being the not radiation protection image acquisition and technical evaluation. Uh, if you need any further clarification on this stuff, do you know how to reach me? Uh, I am available by email. I will hope to see you uh, somewhere along the line. Uh, but if I don't, I wish you all the best and good luck on your exam as you come into the profession of radiologic technology.